Come join our colorful team at Terra, where color lives. Good morning, I'm Leslie Stewart and you're watching Terra at Home. We're in the heart of Westdale Village today and we're at a place called Creative Works. Artist and owner, Sylvia Simpson, thank you so much for allowing us into your space today. Oh, you're very and, welcome. Oh, it's so nice to be, you've been in business for six years. That's right. But probably born an artist, right? Pretty much. I always liked art, I cared a yeah. lot about it, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I uh, have been painting now for you know 20 years and yeah. been in business uh, as a studio, gallery, mm -hmm. uh, venue for six, as you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. And this is your great little space, mm -hmm. and it features a lot of what you love to do, right? Yeah, so, it's really lovely. And it's great because you're able to, I think as an artist, you know, obviously, first and foremost, you love to sit down and paint, but to have someone walk in your store and appreciate something that you've done, take it home with them, and whatever they plan to do with it, that must be yeah. kind of, that's another extension it's, of that. It's such a nice direct relationship, because mm -hmm. if you're, buy something from a gallery, I'm not there. Well, there That's might be right. a gallery owner. But in point. my situation, I've got the street, I've got people. When I'm working, I can see the street. Mm -hmm. uh, people nice come in and collaborate yes. with me about art ideas. Oh, isn't that and nice? Kids can go by and they see barbers and then they see an artist. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like how unusual is that? Yeah, that's true. I think that I mean, I, think that's nice. Maybe I could be an artist and have a gallery on a street. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, this is a dream for many people as you say that. That makes a nice connection uh, to to the patrons. So you again, talking to people. Now one thing that you do do is, is people will come to you and ask you to paint for them. That's right. That's got to be exciting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's going to be flattering. <laughs> I do things uh, that I would never have thought to do myself. Like uh, one uh, good example was um, Churchill Park is right behind uh, Westdale Village, a right. gorgeous big park. Yes. And this man lived across the street from the park. Uh, and so he wanted me to paint the park view of, from his front window. How he saw it. In every season. <gasps> and so I had to make it sort of all linked together so oh, that wow. the spring, fall, winter, yeah. summer. I love Yeah, that so idea. that would be something that I. We'd now, never have thought to do. Now, is that something, that, a project specifically to that, when you're looking at seasons, did you have to wait till each season came along? So was it a long, or did you just imagine it from your perspective? He had some uh, pictures, ah, okay. yeah, and I went through two seasons to do it as okay. well. Yeah. And since I've always loved that park, so I knew exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there oh, you go. Oh, that's exciting. So I love that. Also, um, buildings. People love for you yep. to come. Beautiful I do a lot of uh, streetscapes and mm -hmm. Hamilton streetscapes. Mm -hmm. And uh, people love to come in and uh, they see Hamilton mm -hmm. and they'll say, well, this is, you know, there's Lock Street Bakery or this is, that's you know, right, yeah. uh, where they'll often say, do you have a picture of the house that's right, like, beside that one? Like, <laughs> like, like, it's like no, I haven't really got that specific. But people want that, right? Because yeah. they want something that... Or they it, send it, it home to, to their families or... Mm -hmm. um, something recognizable. I know when we all walked in here, and we, my, my crew, and, you know, we can recognize, you know, the, the, the Rosso house or, you know, it's just, yeah. it's different places, different things that you've done. People, it's amazing. Until you see it sometimes, you forget there is a connection. Mm -hmm. There's a you know, oh, absolutely, like yeah. To, to they recognize. send them all to uh, you know their family in Holland, or mm -hmm. we have a nice new minister at the uh, Westdale United Church, and he's from uh, the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So he gathered up so many of my cards and mm -hmm. sent them all back home so he could show uh -huh. them like where he sure. lived. And that's a great thing too, is that you do have cards, so that's an easy way yeah. to buy art mm -hmm. and uh, and share it with people, mm -hmm. right? Before I had my shop. Uh, I was an artist, uh, you know, just working out of my home, and mm -hmm. we created the studio tour, the Southwest Hamilton studio tour. Yes, I love that concept. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I had a job at Mohawk College as well. I was a professor in uh, the language studies department, mm -hmm. and I've just recently retired. Very good, good for you. But because I had a good job, I was able to take some more risks with my money, right? So mm -hmm. I could um, afford to get prints made. Mm -hmm. I could afford to say, let me see if I could buy 
uh, send uh, these and make cards. That's a nice freedom, though, to be yeah. able to do that, right? And so uh, because of the studio tour, I learned that people, I already knew that people were buying my stuff. Uh -huh. Right, I already knew that. I already had that right. uh, very comfortable. That's good. So mm -hmm. when I had my shop, I knew that I had, uh, you know, five dollar things, ten dollar things, twenty dollar things. Makes it approachable for everybody. Yeah, though, yeah. Right, because some people, you know, w walk into a studio and you know, if there's only twelve hundred dollar pieces to five thousand dollar pieces. Yeah, to, you you can't. So now what you're doing is you're opening up the world to everybody. Your art, in you know, and people again can grab just a piece of it, even in a card format or a small. Yeah, small or style, they can frame right? the little frame. pictures themselves yes, and yes. Uh, collect their own. So mm -hmm. a lot of that is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now of all of the places, this is probably hard. For for you to, to answer maybe or maybe easy I don't know um, of all the places people have asked you to paint or maybe one of do you have specific ones that just really hold near and dear to your heart they all have their stories mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, they're, they're all quite unique yeah. really yeah it's really hard to uh, and I, I've painted uh, events mm -hmm. I've painted uh, a park full of the a whole neighborhood based on ah. going to a barbecue and then I just inserted them in the Park, oh, that's and cool. that, company, that couple went back to Australia, so they mm -hmm. have a painting of their entire neighborhood. Oh, I right? love that! I've they... painted um, uh, weddings, and uh, re, um, when you renew your vows mm -hmm. after uh, thirty years of marriage, mm -hmm. I painted you know that kind of a situation. Now, do you personally like to be there physically to see, or can you just go from photographs? I like to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to take a photograph as a reference, but I want my sketch. That's that's what I'll refer to, so that the painting looks okay. like it's been interpreted. Otherwise, right. the, uh, a photograph will will lock you in. Okay, that makes and sense. And make your paintings, you know, sort of dead. Then you're yeah, yeah. right, because you're you're stuck with what you're yeah. given there. Yeah, and right? then you can't see the brick or the lines or mm -hmm. the shadows or what's the the glass, the stained glass in the window, or you don't, the photo wouldn't capture that. Mm -hmm. But that's why you love your house is because of that stained glass in the front door or the mm -hmm. the color of your you know mm -hmm. door or whatever. Absolutely. Now, how would you describe what would you describe your style as to somebody? Um, I think it's kind of um, animated and mm -hmm. uh, it tends to be uh, happy. Mm -hmm. that's, what and I, that's what I gave you. Yeah. I thought happy when I said yeah, it. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's a bit, it's quite honest though, like mm -hmm. I'm not uh, sentimentalizing. Mm -hmm. One lady mm -hmm. came in, she was from Britain, and she said, your stuff is, uh, is lovely but not too twee. Uh -huh. So like That's a nice the sort of syrupy, you know right. how some right. art can get kind it's real. of, yeah. It's real. So I haven't uh, really exaggerated anything too much. Very right? Good. It's, yeah, it's yeah. quite honest as far as what the character of the house but is. But I think that's what people want yeah. when they're looking for something like exactly. this. Exactly. We appreciate you so much and, and again coming in here and, and being able and being in business for six years. Good for you. Good for Thank you. Thank you very much. In the heart of Westdale. Come by and, uh, and visit Sylvia. And uh, it's called Creative Works and it's uh, right downtown, right down in the village. And uh, again, all approachable art, a little piece of something for everybody. So thank you. All right, we're going to have more Tara Home coming up right after this quick break. Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Terra at Home, and we are one week away from Easter. We have Amy Dominato here from Terra doing what, well, we do best here, right? Yes. We're talking flowers and mm -hmm. really starting to bring color into people's homes. And uh, yes. people get excited this time of year because you can walk into the greenhouse and it's just starting to come alive, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. So lots of really great ideas for people to decorate their home. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, add start adding flowers again. Yes, finally, <laughs> color. <laughs> color. Yes, color is yes. what, you know, what we want to see. So mm -hmm. um, some great uh, sort of some spring flowers that are coming 
coming in right now, what, yes. uh, what are some of the great things we're seeing? Well, the greatest things right now is we're on that cusp of indoor-outdoor. Yes. So we can start decorating our house indoor for Easter and some nice spring color, mm -hmm. but we can also start doing outdoors. So we can get rid of all the old Christmas greens and things <laughs> like that and start adding some yeah, color. Take out the Christmas bulbs at <laughs> the front yes. of your house. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, that's what we're starting to see. We're seeing the tulips, the daffodils yeah. and things like that. They're just coming out of the ground now. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so something like you know, like a this. planter like this sure. would look perfect outside now, the front of your house. in terms of temperatures, they're so all over the place oh, this absolutely. time of year, right? So, yes. you know, in the evening, should people be pulling these still inside? You can. It okay. really depends on where our temperatures are sitting. Yeah. If we're below zero, I do recommend even a garage is better than, sure. you know, or um, add a sheet or a pillowcase over the top. That'll just hold frost off. Okay. So as long as we're in light frost, minus two, zero, you're usually okay, okay. and safe to leave them. They're pretty resilient yes, that way. Yes, they are, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the seasonal plant material is... I mean, it's meant to tolerate a little bit of frost, and right. the things that you're seeing here will. So, okay, and yeah. that's the thing, because people really, I mean, they really want to put these out, out yes. in front of their house and, 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 and keep them there, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's again, it's that time yeah. of that transitional time. So, yes. some really, some really great ideas. If you were to try to build um, your own type of basket or yep. container, mm -hmm. um, some great options. Now, I always like the way you guys do it, because you, you somehow <laughs> manage to fill it. In, in that's it, the biggest thing right? about spring, yes. Yeah. Because you don't have time for things to grow in and fill in like right. we do in the summer. So I always say, Build it like you want to see it. You know, that ah. instant gratification, build it exactly how you want to see it for sure. Okay, that's a good tip then. Yes. And I like a lot of these flowers also, they, they, they do bloom pretty quickly, don't they? They really they do, yeah. yeah. So it's always great to have a mix between, like, say, a bulb stalk, like a right. daffodil and a tulip, and other things that the flower period is longer on them so that you have a consistent flower through the through your spring season. Because mm -hmm. yeah. that's the thing too, you know, it's it's nice to be able to, you know, have the, the fresh cut tulips in your house. Oh, and, yeah, one of my favorite. Them, yeah, yeah, me too, because I love, because like, tulips continue to grow, right? Yes. Once they're cut, they yeah. just keep going and going and mm -hmm. going. But it's really great when they're, when they're in a pot, they're, they're going to last you a lot longer. They will, right? absolutely. And especially when they're outside, because tulips do well in cooler temperatures. So they okay. actually last longer in cooler temperatures. Oh, okay. So, so good to know. Yeah. All right, so um, recommendations, sort of, a, again, you want variety of height, right? Yes, that's the biggest one. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. When you're doing something like this, pick you're something tall which we would call our thriller so the more exciting you know taller element mm -hmm. and then some filler plant material and this one we've done like a tulip and some hyacinths and that'll be your filler so mm -hmm. it's going to give you the body of your arrangement okay. and then we start looking at spillers so for instance adding some ivy into something like this to trail down it'll give you just that complete you know, I like that, great. and that's mm -hmm. when you see when you guys have put something together right and you can yes. come in and that's the great part too is you can come in and just buy one of these. <laughs> oh, absolutely. All done. Yes. <laughs> but some people really like to do the adventure of pulling in their own yeah. colors or whatever. Yes. Um, that That's the ticket, right? As you're saying, is to create levels and to create, that always looks so nice when it's really coming over the It side. really looks finished and it looks like it's been there a while, not like it was just done, just planted. You give it that element of being complete and That's having right. grown. Right. Right. And it's again, so, yeah, so mm -hmm. you're adding some nice, um, again, so what are these little guys? These gu little guys are primula. They're a really popular spring one. They're yeah. actually a perennial, so they're something that you could try to go so. right into the okay. ground with after. Okay. So something nice. But so that's yeah. nice too that people can do that. Yes. Right? You yeah. Can, a lot of people plants. really like doing that. And if you've got an established garden, it's great to then take the plant and go right into the garden. Sure. Yeah. Why not, right? Yeah. Just why? Yeah, absolutely. Through and, mm -hmm. Okay. So that's easy enough to do. So at this point, um, at, at, yeah, Tara moving through into April, you can come in and get all of these. Balls all kinds of things. You can build your own. You can pick mm -hmm. all the elements. We've even got things like different types of sticks and stuff here yes, at Terra. That this adds is a too. Yes, a Terra exclusive. So adding something like this, you know, a nice yellow or an orange pussy willow to an arrangement Aren't those like this. Cool. Yes. So I've never seen that before. I love that yeah, idea. It's something new to us this year here at Terra, but we're yeah. really excited about it because it definitely gives you that element of color for a longer period of mm -hmm. time. Because and when the daffodils do fade out, you yeah. have the nice green, right. but you'll still have the color. Right. Yeah. And it's so, it so says spring, right? Yes, absolutely. Like written all over yeah, it. So nothing like pussy willows in that's the spring. Great. So. And of course, again, one thing that's great too here is it's kind of that one-stop travel. You know, it's, there are a lot of accessories. Oh, so yes. a lot of mm -hmm. really great little, um, I know I've always managed to find all of my Easter decorations here. <laughs> and you just always need one more bunny. Yes. I always find because there's like, and I just stick them all over the place and setting yeah. like, you know, your dining room table yeah. and putting them there and you have all like loose eggs and everything. Oh yeah, and that's a great thing. Like for me, I, I don't like the traditional Easter, so I do eggs in a vase. So it says Easter, but not, oh, you know, cool. in a less traditional way. Sure. And using plants as part of your decor. So you're doing Easter, so you may have a wreath with the pastel colors, but then you can pull in, you know, a yellow Gerber just to give you a little element of decor. Okay. Live decor, right? Yeah. So things yeah. like that. That's a good idea. And mm -hmm. of course the orchids too. Oh, orchids <laughs> are one of my favorite because yes. they last way longer than cut flowers. Mm -hmm. And they just give a little bit more of a modern 
look to your they home. Are, they so do they are, because you can put them just one on a coffee table and it yes, just looks so and they last cool. so long. So you can mm -hmm. buy cut flowers that last you a week or so, but you can buy an orchid and can last you about three months. So okay, so tips on watering an orchid because I, I sometimes don't have the best luck with orchids. <laughs> so I, as much as you're saying, yes. hey, they're really oh, easy, they last forever. Um, I, I have a bit of an issue with orchids. Do so, you? So usually too much tip. TLC. Too much TLC is always an issue with okay. orchids. A lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is I'm, that your issue? <laughs> too much love. I'm giving them too much love. So okay. Yeah. Yes. So, so, oh yes, I think maybe I have too much, too much water? Possibly, yeah. Orchids are one of the greatest for set it and forget it. Walk, check it every 10 to 15 days for okay. water. Okay. Um, quite often we have a tendency to water them just, you know, on a daily or, you know, every couple day basis. They absolutely don't need it. In a month, you may water it two or three times. Oh. So, and they don't like to sit in water either. So. No, so you don't yeah. want the water sitting, so you want some kind of drainage. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah. and so you're just giving a little bit of water and leaving it alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I shall try that. <laughs> Hydrangeas, beautiful this time of year. Yes, that's one of my absolute favorites. Me too. Something that we do grow a lot of here at Terra, and the quality is just fantastic. You won't find them anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And great colors, the pinks, the blues, yep. there's purple, there's a white, some really nice colors. And they combine really well with other plants that will extend your season. So oh, ivies okay. and gerbras and yeah. things like that. So you have your hydrangea, but as it fades out, you've still got other color mm -hmm. lasting. So that's what I, I like about them too. It is it's such a big pocket of color. It's yes. just right. Yeah. They just look so gorgeous. And yeah. again, just you can just throw a few on the table. Yeah. And, and for instance, the blue hydrangea. It's mm -hmm. one. There's not a lot of really true blue flowers. No. To, so to see a blue hydrangea or a blue primula, a lot of people like that. Blue is a color that a lot of people like, and it's very popular this season. So. Okay. Yeah. That, that, okay. Mm -hmm. That's true. That that makes sense. Yeah. So I guess this is the time now to come in and get your Easter stuff. Again, it's amazing. Easter's Easter's earlier this year for a lot of yes, people. Yes, it so is. It, Which is nice it, because yeah. it's right that first sign of spring which is what we typically know it as last year it was really late so it kind of it felt like it dragged out yeah. Easter came Easter was done spring was done and then that's right yeah. and then all of a sudden it's boom it's summer right yes. remember our winter dragged out so we kind of needed something to come yeah. for us so. so we get this big instant yeah. Easter inside Easter outside color finally and it's a really great time of year and it's very exciting here at Terra because everything is new yeah well yeah. thank you so much Amy for all the information it's really great and again You're you can welcome. always come in and talk to these guys and uh, you guys can help people out absolutely in, in, yeah, in so many different ways to. and mm -hmm. I know that I sometimes need the help as well and I'm learning Oh, so much here. We'll be back with <laughs> more good. hair at home right after this. <laughs> Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're back at the Terra Kitchen. We're here with Chef Rachel, and um, we are preparing kind of a really nice sort of a fresh dish, a great meal idea. Yes. Tell us about it. Yeah, we're doing a uh, pan-fried chicken, so mm -hmm. we've got some seasoned breadcrumbs and a nice light uh, citrus salad. That's great. To go with that. Great combination, yeah. right? A lot of people kind of cutting back on carbs these days, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're getting a little bit with some of the breadcrumbs, but nothing too heavy, so it really kind of just lightens things up a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I personally love the combination of having just a protein and, and a big salad. Mm -hmm. and you're saying you're kind of hooked on this uh, pan-fried chicken thing right now. I am. Mm -hmm. I am, because it's... Uh, like it's easy, it's light. Mm -hmm. I don't do a whole breading station with the eggs and the flour. Just okay. a little light coating of the breadcrumbs gives it a little extra flavor. Yeah. You know, okay. than just a regular baked or grilled chicken breast. Mm -hmm. But um, still very healthy, easy to do. And so yeah, I, I usually just put a little double of goat cheese on top, and that's my mm. that's my snack. But oh, very yeah, good. today we're gonna have a nice uh, a nice fresh summer salad. Okay. I shouldn't say summer salad. Maybe a spring salad. Yeah. Springtime. Spring. <laughs> but I think I think these bright colors and fresh mm -hmm. ingredients, right? And the warmth. Hopefully the warmth is coming soon. Yes. Yes. So I have my uh, my pan heating um, over a low heat right now, but mm -hmm. we'll turn it up, get it going a little hot there. Okay. And um, basically we're just gonna we're just gonna sear the chicken on both sides, a couple minutes per side, and then we can just put it in the oven to finish it for a couple minutes if, if okay. it's necessary. But what I do with my chicken breasts is I cut them open, so I butterfly them. 
uh, oh, makes them. Okay. So cut them open right down the middle, um, makes them a little thinner and easier they, to they cook too. Cook right? a little quicker. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have concerns, just especially with chicken. I find you know obviously you can you can under undercook uh, red meats and, and get away with it a little bit more, but with chicken, it's really you really want to make sure that's cooked. Right. So at least you have better control over it with this. Right, exactly. So you're not putting any oil or anything on it. You're just going straight for right into the breadcrumbs. Right to the breadcrumbs. So okay. these are seasoned breadcrumbs, uh, salt, pepper, some fresh chopped herbs, mm -hmm. uh, whatever you kind of have hanging around. Okay. Um, so we'll put this right in the pan. And uh, of course, a little bit of olive oil in the pan, but you always need your yeah. Your healthy oils. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go for the other one. So just a light, a light breading, but it kind of gives it that crispiness and um, a little more flavor for your sure for your yeah. chicken. I I do eat chicken a lot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I like too. to try to. I don't eat a lot of red meat myself. So people, I think a lot of people have kind of pushed red meat out a little bit out of their diet. So trying to find other sort of some alternatives to preparing chicken is mm -hmm. good, yeah. right? It just gets a little boring sometimes if you're like pretty much eat it every day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or fish. So. Fish is good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's sizzling there. We can leave that for a minute on that side and then we'll uh, we'll turn it over and then we'll talk about the salad. Okay. If I could just pass that over to you yeah. to give some room. So another one of my favorites is, is arugula. Yes, So that's going to be too. the base of our salad. Uh, it's really nice for presentation purposes too because mm -hmm. it... Um, it holds well, it, right? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't get all sort of flimsy and... Exactly. Yeah. And so, it has a nice nutty nice flavor to it too. I mm -hmm. like I like the flavor um, too. Yeah, strong, a little peppery. Yeah, peppery. so that's, that's nice. I like to have uh, mm -hmm. arugula as I have said in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, with that we're going to pair some um, fennel mm -hmm. or anise we can call it. So. What I've done is I've thinly sliced it. So mm -hmm. this is uh, half a bulb right here, mm -hmm. but so I just cut it in half, take the core out, and then even just with a knife, slice just it as thin as possible. Sliced. Okay. Uh, the thinner the better, I think, mm -hmm. but um, it's all personal preference. And we're gonna make a, an easy salad dressing, but I've made some ahead of time, and I've just tossed the fennel in the sal salad dressing for now. Okay, so it gives you um, an idea of what you're looking at in terms of the, the slicing and that. Right. Okay. Um, Good. Tossing it in the salad dressing ahead of time just loosens it up a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a raw vegetable that we're eating, so it softens it. Okay. I'm going to flip these. Oh. <laughs> there we go. So they're getting nice and brown. There we go. We'll continue now, so that cooking. Now, this a dressing that you're going to make for this, you've already put that in here? Right. So okay. I made some ahead of time, tossed it in there, too. Okay. Um, and just let that sit. But mm -hmm. my dressing's simple. Uh, it's a dressing that I always make. Mm -hmm. I know that we have uh, done this before, but mm -hmm. just some uh, basic oil. I like to use a vegetable oil because I find the olive oil um, overpowers too much making okay. dressing. So I like to use my olive oil for maybe finishing off the salad. Sure. Sure. Uh, but for the dressing, I like to use a veg oil. Um, a little bit of Dijon mustard I put in there. Mm -hmm. My vinegar, any kind of vinegar you like, this happens to be uh, white wine vinegar. Mm -hmm. So the ratio three to one, three tablespoons of oil to about one tablespoon of vinegar. But you can adjust as you like. Mm -hmm. Whisk that up. And I like to add um, something sweet into my dressing. So a pinch of sugar, maybe a teaspoon of uh, honey, if okay. you have that. Okay. And so basically just whisk that up and um, that's my easy salad dressing okay. that I do. So that's it's good, it's easy. Great. It's my favorite, mm -hmm. and I think it goes well with this. Perfect. Um, that's looking good. So in a minute, I would probably put that in the oven, 350, just to finish it off. Maybe it'll take uh, anywhere between five to ten minutes. We'll okay. keep an eye on it. You just want to make sure that all the pink's gone out of it. Sure. That's um, easy. So I'll turn that down, and we can do that in a moment. Okay. The rest of my salad is fairly simple. Mm -hmm. Some thinly sliced red onion. Now I like to slice this as thin as possible. The last thing I want when I'm eating a salad is a big chunk. I know of, a lot of people onion. don't like that. I mean, I love onion, but I now kind of appreciate it when it's just a little bit more of it. It gives just an overall nice flavor to the salad versus, as you say, yeah, a chunk of it. Yeah, so exactly. Good. Okay. And even a good mm -hmm. idea would be to mix that in with the fennel. Sure. Maybe we can do that. Yep. Um, and again, it'll kind of soften it yep. up a bit. Mm -hmm. And now our citrus. So this is what's making our citrus salad. I decided on grapefruit. You can do, you know, a bunch of different citrus if you like. Mm -hmm. Maybe some orange in there. Um, but segmenting a grapefruit. Pretty mm -hmm. simple. 
you have your whole grapefruit and mm -hmm. you just want to basically cut cut the peel off so you're left with something that looks like this okay and I've segmented half of it so you just want to go so you're cutting out around the membrane yeah basically. exactly and make so it look nice. that makes it so you don't want to be chewing on that in your salad either no Good. so you can do that as many as you like just mm -hmm. keep cutting through and uh, and those are the ingredients for the salad, so we can toss those all together and we'll place that um, on the side or on top of our chicken when it's Perfect. all ready. All right, so what we'll do is we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll assemble all of this. We'll get the chicken uh, out of the oven and we'll be good to go. We'll be right back. Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Tara at Home, and we're finishing up our uh, chicken with citrus salad mm -hmm. today with uh, Chef Rachel. And so you just, uh, you had pan fried the chicken, put it in the oven for a few minutes. It actually cooked very quickly, didn't it? Yeah, baked for five minutes mm -hmm. or so. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, so now just plating it, you can, awesome. Okay, and so we're just gonna compile the salad. Yeah. So uh, our arugula, our dressing, I'm just gonna toss this um, lightly with the dressing. Mm -hmm. You don't really need a lot because I've added my onions into the fennel, so that's all dressed that's already. That's flavor as well, too. So sure. mm -hmm. I find that mixing something like arugula with your hands, plating with your hands, is a lot. You always see chefs easier. do it, right? They, mm -hmm. they always use their hands, so yep. that like, makes sense that you're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I just never think to do that at home, but yeah. Well, it's a little messy, but um, yeah, it's. The, the reason why we do it is because it's easy for the presentation, right? If you're right, you can control it more when exactly. you're making it look all yeah. pretty. So we'll add in the onions and fennel into here. We'll mix it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then we'll put the citrus on top. Now you could add a little bit of cheese at the end too, maybe a little bit of feta cheese or a nice yeah, crumbly would cheese be nice. would be nice. Maybe some shaved Parmesan. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was saying, we can add in the, the bits of the of the fennel, the tops of the fennel, mm -hmm. the herb that's on the top. It just uh, it looks later. nice too, right? It just looks nice. So, just put that so as Rachel's preparing mm -hmm. this, I should remind you that you can always log on to our website, uh, terragreenhouses.com, for, uh, for any of the recipes that we prepare. And uh, again, it just makes them nice and straightforward and easy to follow along. And uh, of course, you can always catch us on Saturday mornings, but uh, I really love the color that you're about to add to this. I love that you're adding grapefruit. This actually makes it quite a healthy meal. I mean, sure, mm -hmm. it's pan fried for just a little bit, but it's really yeah. quite healthy. Yeah, as long as you just control the oil that you're putting in. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and and like I said, the breadcrumbs, just a few breadcrumbs. Or you don't yeah. even have to sure. bread it at all if you don't want. Perfect. Maybe well, a little you. bit of salt and pepper. Good job, Chef Rachel. There we go. That's it for Tara at Home. Thank you. We'll see you again. Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader.